That looks good. I wonder, did it, did it send a noti? Oh, it didn't. Oh, good. Hello. Oh, this is family friendly. We can't, Look at that. can't be having No, that. we can't have F bombs. Can't be F in the bomb. No one's uh, one shot, one kill. How? <laughs> Explain that. How about picks? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're gonna hey. Yo, what's up? We, we have a new game called ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Mysterious Number Report. In which, from time to time, Brian oh, asks Justin, oh, "What's a just mysterious remedy. number?" You shouldn't do that. That's, that sounds fun. I just, I just need a, a just a, you just, just a want random a mysterious number. Give me a number. This that is one of those jokes. Spooky, a little spooky. Yeah, I don't know. This six, is one of those 65. jokes that are for the two people who are what? hearing it. I could just. How about Justin? Show me the mysterious number, and I can oh. just show you the mysterious I number. I can't tell. It's, oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a good okay. number. It's a mysterious number. It's a mysteriously good number. Yeah, I don't like the bit either, Bryce. Is it, it just because it's very uh, yeah. Uh, my a buddy of mine uh, does a stream on Sundays called the Cool Stream, and they were doing numberology, and they basically they look at weird websites and weird subcultures, and so they were, and just look at the numbers on them. Yeah, uh, and so. Maybe we can is pretend it it's numerology, numerology or numerology. It's numerology, but I said it bad. You said it. Yeah, numerology. but you said it showed bad. a spotlight on it. Well, I didn't know because yeah. we found out that STEM was STEAM today. Yeah. What is it? STEM? Uh, uh, yeah. Science, technology, engineering, and math? Mm. Well, I don't. I, and, and look, STEM. I'm, I'm, yeah. Everybody says STEM. So apparently it's also they've added the arts. <laughs> so it's STEAM. Uh, no, no, that's. <laughs> Is that I, not true? I, I appreciate the inclusion for that. <laughs> Those are two different things. No, You're putting I, your apples no, in my orange number bag. Number one, number one. I, I, I this, was, this was the a... impression that the whole reason for a STEM movement was that, hey, you know what you guys are great at? Yeah. Reading and arts. You know what we could use some work? This is stuff you're not currently good enough at. Exactly. STEM. STEM. Yeah. So I, don't, I mean, this was explained to us by, and I'm not going to say who, but a mother of three. And an artist. <laughs> uh, and an artist. <laughs> uh, uh, How did she, that she unnamed mother that, of three and artist feel about the A? Uh, she was all for it. Yes. She's pro A. She's pro. She's, she's I don't want to say, put, I don't want to say, the though. I mean, like, <laughs> some investigative journalist should find out whether or not she's funded by Big A. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Arsenic. Or a... <laughs> A big arsenic. A big arsenic. I was gonna say a, a big a hole. Oh. <laughs> what? Funded by a just big funded by one. <laughs> okay. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't accept those gold coins. I don't know. Oh yeah, if, if they fell out of a big a hole. <laughs> I'm trying glad to, we're trying to do the teeth. Do the teeth test on it, and it snaps, and you <laughs> hope it's one chocolate. shot, one kill. Oh wait, chocolate. Garfield did get shot too. He did. What? President Garfield? Yeah. He's the reason we have uh, 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 metal detectors, and it didn't even work. He really? still died. They invented a metal detector to find the bullet in Garfield, and then they couldn't find it. It didn't oh, work very well, and then he point. died. And then we celebrate it that's on a Monday. That's different than McKinley, because McKinley got shot at the World's Fair, and, they ha and like demoing at the World's Fair was... My, uh, I might have my stories mixed up. I don't know. Oh, let's see. Uh, President James A. Garfield, 1881, uh, born in poverty, extended Republican National Convention. Ha Ooh, I'm not going to say that word out loud. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yes, uh, an officer shot, shot him in Washington, not immediately fatal, 
Uh, he died like six months. No, he died like three months later. From infections, from infections. caused by his doctors. Caused by the doctors. Oh, what were the doctors doing? Just ashing in the wounds? Yeah, like they, I think they invented a metal detector. Uh, latrogenesis? Uh, whatever that means. That means doctors done goofed. These doctors <laughs> done goofed. Um... Uh, <laughs> Uh, alleging that uh, in DDG, <laughs> doctors done goof. Doctors do the craziest bloopers. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Five Garfield. The left leg. Uh, uh, it appears as if uh, your husband has succumbed to his wounds, and uh, we're gonna have to rule it a DDG. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and it's just the three of us today. We'll, we, but uh, yep. I've got a whole lineup of uh, topics. Uh, uh, Andrew's got to write another book. That's right. He's writing another book right now. Yeah. And he's writing it. Um, he's booked. To uh, to the, the gentleman who can hear me, uh, I have three topics today, so we can steam around in them for a Stem minute. around, yeah. technically. Stem around. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. All right. You guys ready to do the show? Yep. yep. Ready. All right. Recording there. Recording there. Oh, did I, did I get a sync? Let me get one thing. Boop. Boop. Three, two, one. Boop. Okay, great. All right. Here we go for weird things in three. Two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weird Things, the Weird Things podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined as always with Justin Robert Young. Yeah, man, what's going on? President's Day! And Brian Brushwood. Brap, brap, assassination of Andrew Garfield. Wait, hold on, that's the actor. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, take two. Andrew nope. Garfield. No. Wow. No. Someone tell Sony. Can yeah. we drop spoilers for the Spider Man movie yet, or well, is that I mean, still embargoed? That's right. Uh, 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 John Wilkes Booth is the big bad guy. Yeah. Please don't he spoil it. I'm watching stuff. it in two days. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, hello, everybody. This is a podcast all about weird things. Hello. Hey. Yo, uh, it's just the three of us today. Andrew's yeah. writing a book, um, but he'll be back soon. It's going to be bad, a good too bad. book. Nothing, though. nothing weird happened this week. All I'll just say is if the book isn't good, when it comes out, uh -huh. you can say this is a disappointment on multiple levels, one of them being that you missed that episode of Weird Things. <laughs> but it won't happen because it's it going to be very good because it's all of his books go, are very good. Go ahead good. and put this, one, put this one in your uh, musket and powder it up. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I haven't been this disappointed since I listened to World's Greatest Con Season 2. Trailer. Trailer. Preview, which deleted dropped today. 24 hours from hours. multiple feeds. It's available now. Go get it. Yeah. It's the first 12 minutes of season two. Where can they go get it? Uh, uh, well, I mean, you can go find World's Greatest Con. This is the place that we really want you to go, is to go on wherever you listen to podcasts, search for World's Greatest Con, uh, and, and you'll see Brian looking very uh, 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 contemplative. Also also stern. Stern. Like, like you're about to get mm -hmm. a talking to. By Mr. Mr. B. Very R&B energy. Yeah, very R&B energy. Bean. Very quiet storm energy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, so check that. Out. In fact, we did put the out. preview in this feed here. So if that's oh yeah, we did. Oh, uh, also right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can you can find it. Uh, find it there. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for joining us. We've got a story here from our friends at Gizmodo. I've got a bit of a theme today. Oh, or I got a little oh. bit of a I got a little bit of uh, sort of a structure today. I'm going to be showing you some things, and we're going to be talking about the things that you're seeing. Okay. Like this. Oh. Can you take a look at this dagger for me? Yes. Can well, you wait, maybe describe is, is what you're seeing. Is this all the same dagger? Or are they yeah. three different is, daggers? Because um, we are seeing three. Three daggers. Uh, this is two sides of the same dagger. The top and the bottom image are the same side. I see. Okay. Front, okay. Uh, front back, front. One is, one is black and white. The other uh, appears to be some kind of enhanced image. Mm. Uh, Contrasty. Yeah, like, uh, like uh, you know. I think that might. No, I, I don't know if that's an x-ray, but. Kind of, kind of a greenish front. tint to it. Um, yeah. uh, it looks a lot like, if, if you're still watching Raised by Wolves season two, Looks like that pen knife they keep showing and calling a sword for some reason. <laughs> yeah. But it's got a handle and it's it's got some embellishments on it. So this is a dagger of Tutankhamun, found in, uh, found in his burial chamber in the 1920s. Oh, can you tell me what is weird about this iron dagger of King Tut's? Mm. Does, does it does it, it does it, it, it have like a glass? Uh, well, first of all, if it's iron, it should be a little bit more rusted. Which would imply that I don't know when steel was invented or alloys or whatever. So the fact that there are so few rust spots is curious. But also the mm -hmm. the hilt of it, the pommel, looks a little bit like it's made of glass or yeah. plastic or something. I, I, I was looking at the filigree on the handle, which suggested it was forged in Arizona, and yet <laughs> the blade is indicative of having moved to Babylonia. Okay, well, hold on. <laughs> Let me take a look at it by holding it up to the sun. Oh, dear, I dropped it in the fire. <laughs> 
Deep cut. It's a great, it's a great night Patreon. A great night Bro. Patreon runner. You need to be invested in us financially to get all these jokes. I, I mean, let me let me just say that that if you go all in, you get rewarded with, with, with cross pollination bits. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, I guess I would agree. The, okay, the so most the most uh, uh, you know eye popping thing there would be the glass pommel. Okay. Well, this dagger is special because the Iron Age, Brian, you were actually pretty close. The Iron Age didn't start until about a century after King Tut died. So was this just conveniently well-preserved? Because uh, I, I know that part of the oxidization process involves a little bit of moisture. That's why things that get wet tend to rust and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I also know that in Egypt, uh, it, it, it's a little bit arid, okay. uh, especially inside these perfectly hermetically sealed uh, sarcophagi. Right. Uh, let's, I, I, I don't know the specific, I, I, I believe I know why, but that'll get, we'll get to that in a, in a minute. But um, uh, uh, this is this is special because the Iron Age hadn't even started yet. Um, and uh, But is that just when it picked up? Was there like indie iron artists that were doing that for a while and the next thing you know it's like oh everybody's doing it and it's the iron age well that's a great question and scientists did have that I'm question glad. a few <laughs> years ago uh so uh uh scientists believe that the iron of that time yeah. was would have been extremely valuable and rare because it was sourced from meteorites no kidding that's right uh, uh to quote gizmodo a meteorite a meteorite dagger found in Turkey dates back to the early Bronze Age, a thousand years before Tutankhamun was born. Besides the dagger, Tutankhamun was entombed with an iron headrest and an iron bracelet. So these were valuable treasures that were either fashioned for or traded to this empire because even then they were known to be special, amazing, and rare. We've got a real-life Sokka's space sword from uh, 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 The Last Airbender. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, uh, uh, just the sheer fact that you had metal at the time was so technologically that was some wild, wild stuff. Yeah. So a new study this month found that the daggers makeup includes iron, nickel, manganese, and cobalt, along with other chemicals. What's fascinating is the uh, apologies for my pronunciation, the Widmanstaten structure observed on the knife. Uh, before I show you, oh wait, no, you're looking at it. This <laughs> is the Widmanstaten. Uh, structure, but what are you looking at? Well, uh, it looks almost like a, a, a the, the the mean streets of Chicago. <laughs> 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 uh, it's uh, this crisscross pattern with some diagonals on there, and all of a sudden, I'm piecing together that yeah, I guess uh, if if a meteor was filled with um, uh, I, I I believe most uh, steel alloys are basically iron with a little bit of usually tin or zinc or something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but almost, you know, because you know, it's fire comes at you when you're in space. Yeah. Uh, it's going to melt and fuse it together, creating this alloy. Yeah. That's remarkable. I hadn't, I hadn't really pieced that together. It's incredible. And it's got a very grid like structure. Like Brian mentioned, it almost kind of looks like, uh, it looks like modern art. It looks like, yeah, it looks like modern art from the, uh, I don't know, the early 90s, mid 90s. I, mean, or I was going to say like as early as the 30s from the modernist period. Oh, I could see both. Yeah. I could see both of that. Yeah. It's kind I of think we can all agree it was modern. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is very modern. So these are. The uh, past? No. The future? I don't think so. I prefer to go with so modern. Call it this current one. art. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Al Gore is going to fund it. It's electrified. So these Widman Staten patterns or Thompson structures are cross hatch looking textures found in some meteorites due to the uh, way that nickel is distributed in the rock. So the dagger's metal likely came from an octahedrite, which is, quote, the largest group of iron meteorites. They classify meteorites by, um, I think, they, they, the. Um, this is a m mostly an educated guess, but I believe it's based on the the chemical uh, grouping, the common types of chemical structures that are in there. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, especially um, uh, uh, what little I know comes from organic chemistry, which always involves carbon. So I'll keep my mouth shut. Mm. Um, and so uh, this this is uh, cosmically pretty common. Those types of meteorites, but. In ancient Egypt and earlier, incredibly rare, incredibly valuable iron. Um, and because it actually still has this structure intact and because some of the chemicals are still in place, it lend, lends cred credence to the idea that it was forged in a very low fire. Uh, because once it gets up, once some of these metals get up to a high enough temperature, they would uh, they would undergo a chemical process and 
be changed. Uh, uh, so, so like, there like was kind of like a, a blank slate. Like there, there's um, uh, there's pottery. If I'm remembering this correctly, and uh, among the various minerals that are in pottery include uh, 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 ferrous materials. That uh, as the pottery get, gets forged, um, it it uh, whatever direction of the magnetosphere, the the north south poles. They align themselves to it and they get locked in. And so as a result, based on different pottery, we could tell whether it was before or after the poles swapped or, or what have you. Mm. But but then once they get burned again, oh now I'm now I'm outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a they, there's a burning it, it element. Does like, to it, it does like a reset basically uh, as yeah. far as the configurations go. I see. I don't know that these reset, but they they noticed that it, it there wasn't this the signs that it had been raised to normal forging temperatures. Uh, they they believe it would have been if, uh, forged at a low temperature around 950 Celsius or uh, 1,742 Fahrenheit. So that's, yeah, that, that's that, pretty cool. That that would have been uh, that would have been like a like a camp campfire hot. Um, so, yeah, so, makes so sense. Not, not crazy. Uh, yeah, they probably just had a big enough piece to to bang it into shape. That's amazing. Yeah, um, I wonder how many. Like, did they screw up on a few of them? Like, like before, or like how oh how God. how much like, like, progress hey, knives? We only have so many rocks that gods dropped. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of pressure on the blacksmith, right? Like, Absolutely. like all of a sudden he's like, oh, I screwed up one of the god swords. I would oh, love. Oh, you did it again, Jenkins. If if there's anybody out there listening who knows a little bit of is it metallurgy or metallurgy? I think it's metallurgy. I think it's metallurgy. Yeah. We're gonna officially rule it as metallurgy. I I, I I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay. I was like, who it just was a metal just my flesh yeah. gavel. Like, I'm a metallurgist. <laughs> flesh gavel, <laughs> Jesus. Come in. Oh, okay. You may uh, not me. I'm just saying. <laughs> my question is uh uh Bronze Age came before Iron Age, right? Um, uh -huh. after? Uh, which, like, I assume uh, it's a matter of one is easier to work with or oh, harder to work with. Uh, yes, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. Yes, because stone is stone is more malleable, is softer, uh, easier to work with bronze. than iron. Bronze. What did I say? You said stone. Right, Stone Age, then, then bronze, bronze Age, then Iron then Age. Iron then you age. said then you said the stone is easier and more malleable, oh, well, <laughs> which I don't think. I then, guess it's true in lava. Well, no, no, I, I think he was saying at the beginning of the chain. But, yes, the it, most malleable yes. is stone. The second is no, bronze. no, it's copper. No. I was just talking about copper. I just meant what copper's more. What the hell is happening, <laughs> Bryce? This is an educational show, and we've all learned the ages and the third uh, three of them. Oh, it's the Rock of Ages. Uh, yes, the Bronze Age was before the Iron Age, so there would have been bronze. That would be the Stone Age, the uh, Rock of Ages. <laughs> Age of Rocks. Age of Rocks. Uh, there is none higher. Sucker MCs should get my dagger. <laughs> That's right. All right, we got another story here from our friends at Live Science. This is another Looky Lou. I'm going to show you this picture. Ready. And Wait a minute. Should we do the plug first? Uh, Don't yes. we normally do the plug after the first? Oh, we can story? do it whenever we would like. I mean, like. we could drink from protocol. We could do something for the very first time. I Today's think this is when we day, normally man. do it. Yeah, then I make an executive order. Yes. yes. And that executive order is give me all your money. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, not robber. all of it. Not all of it. Not all of it. This ain't a stick up. This is an offer. I'm making you a business offer, yeah. friend. Yeah. If Can you head on over it? to Patreon, doc, no, you right. can't. Okay. It's legally not allowed right. to uh, refuse it. You have to give me all your money. I'm joking. Uh, uh, get <laughs> on over joking. to Patreon.com slash weird things where you can uh, uh, get uh, a support for this show <laughs> to us. a great like, presidential slogan. I'm just kidding, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Hey, uh, it'd be great if Putin pulls that at the very end of all this. <laughs> hey, just like just I was never thought how to get babushka. Yeah, 150,000 troops on the Ukrainian border, and then he's just like, "I'm joking," and then pulls it all back. That'd be hilarious. Almost as hilarious as as uh, uh, you Your political war. as as the joy that you'll feel when you support us at Patreon.com/slash Weird Things. Uh, you get the After Things podcast. It's a fun time. Mm -hmm. We all love time. it. There's a video that's definitely over 10 years old. <laughs> and uh, uh, good sell. it's a good sell. That's what I like that's to say right. about it. Uh, uh, wow. uh, make us cozy in our cell. Hey, uh, uh, it's, a, it's thank you. Uh, in all seriousness, on, I mean, we like to really bring it down and get the <laughs> word out on, <laughs> on President's Day. It's a solemn occasion. <laughs> and, if we could just real quick have four minutes of silence. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs>
<laughs> Patreon.com. Yeah. Great things. This is from our friends at Live Science. Fellas, I've got a picture here. Life for Science or Live Science? Live Science. L I V E. L I V E. Live. Uh, without Live any science. hints, I have hints, but without any hints, yeah. can you guess what these image? What this is an image of? I would uh, I would say that those were uh they look kind of like donuts. They look I mean to be honest they look like uh I don't know ancient Egyptian organic chemistry test teaching aids. I I'm, I'm where you're like as a matter of fact I'm looking at it that's a tetrahedral okay picture you got a bunch of stone balls some of them got huh. Got holes drilled through them. Some yeah. of them got pegs coming out of them. The one that got the pegs coming out of them is in the shape of a tetrahedron, which I'll be danged if that's not going to be like the way carbon mm. be like. Mm. And then and then the rest Carbon be, do be like that. Carbon be like that, y'all. Uh, and then meanwhile, like those could be oxygen on the right. And then maybe those are hydrogen if they are just little, little attachy pegs. Okay. Uh, okay I'm going to say gambling dice. Gambling dice. All yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, I have a hint for you. You're okay. both wrong. Oh, um, damn it. <laughs> uh, Came up snake eyes for me. <laughs> ancient Egypt gambling dice. These are excavated between 1960 and 2010. Uh, so they were dug wait, up? Uh, can, can we find out? What, yes. Yes. That, wait, so, no, they were so they weren't invented then. They were excavated between Excavated. Those, uh, wait, they were, between wait, 1960 where? and 2010? Yeah. Thanks for narrowing it down. It's, look, that's the first hint. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, you know what? Three uh, hints. What on earth happened between 1960 and 2010, aside from our parents and our entire lives? <laughs> Let's, there's a, actually, this other hint helps very much. They are dated back to 1590 during a siege. B.C.? Or CE. Uh, We're not going to get back to this one. C the common <laughs> era. Okay. They are dated to 1590, very specifically the year 1590. And and we're reading it correctly in that they're they're stone, whatever they're. Yeah. Doing. Okay. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, okay, 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 okay. New idea. The uh, last one, the last hint I think is going to give you the, the best one. I'd, I'd like a, one more guess from y'all. Okay, well, I mean, if I'm thinking about this around the Middle Ages, what do you got? You got a bunch of peasants. What are they doing? They're always harvesting. Harvesting what? Grain. For whom? For 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 the Duke. Mm. Uh, the Duke. What's the he Lord, got? Land. The Lord of the land. Okay, so so they show up with the grain, and then all the peasants are like, we got grain for you. And he says, I don't want grain. And he's like, well, but that's what we've been growing. And it's like, well, I want bread. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You got to grind it down. How do you grind it down? Could get a giant grinding wheel, or you could make a little peg and 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 a peg 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 and ball. Yeah, peg and ball. See that? Peg, peg peg and ball bread, mm -hmm. like a like the a Duke's stone favorite. pestle. You're describing a stone mortar and pestle. Yeah, sort of. Also, but this is a mobile do, version. Do we like get the iPod out? Mini <laughs> portable? Yeah. Do we get to find out where these came from? Uh, the last hint will give you that. Mm. Okay. Well, that's my guess. Wait, what's okay. your What's your guess? I'm gonna say gambling dice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, two of the sites that these items were found at include Iwatsuki Castle and Hachioji Castle. So Georgia, which had been captured during the siege of Odawara in Japan. Oh, okay. Damn it. I was way off. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, that one with the pegs is messing me up. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it looks like it, it looks like a. It do, it really does look like a molecular when you see the little heck. Like, here's two. And particles, and they've got a bomb. Or it could look like an adorable little pig. Oh, I thought you oh, were about to say like dice again. Maybe oh, I was going to just really look upset. over there. No, that'll be my big cavern. Okay. Just wait for it. All right. uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that clearly you're supposed to thread some kind of textile through some of these bones. Mm. It's got to be a weapon of some variety. You think so? Yeah. What's that one on the left? The one that looks like a angelfish with too big of a grin. Yeah, down. it, it looks, kinda kinda looks like a like a pierogi. Like maybe Wait, it's it's been looks like an arrowhead now that I look at it that way. It does kind of look like an arrowhead. Mm. Or it's got it's 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 almost like a sphere, but it's definitely got points. Or maybe it's a pierogi and you give it to your enemies and he's like, damn, this is a delicious pierogi. You know Eat With this, this line, rock. it looks like an empanada, really. It does, it does. have an empanada. Okay, look, look I and I was for, trying to go with something for, lighter. Forgive for me for being <laughs> Forgive me for being somewhat base here, but you got pointy things and mm -hmm. you've got um, vessel things. Uh, so mm. at, 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 I'm gonna put I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna call these fertility oh. implements of fertility some variety. Aids. You see uh, what I'm saying? Marital aids. Okay. Oh, I didn't even want to go there, but I guess just the fertility. Yeah. Just even fertility. Okay. I mean, I mean, basically, you got you got 
giving things and receiving things. Sure, there are pegs and there yeah. are slots. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Justin, boy, you want to say gambling? You are, you dice, are leading me into, into dangerous waters considering the size of the pegs and the size of the holes. <laughs> the pegs are, they would be very I'm unhappy. Just, I don't even want to go down the road considering where you said they're from. Uh, I will say... 1590, so this is pre, yeah. pre-colonial. pre So feudal Japan? Yep, that's right. Feudal See, that, Japan. that just tells me these are like petrified hands that were chopped off. I by would samurai. say Ooh. that these are either good luck charms. Mm, okay. They're charming. Or... That's for sure. No, I'm going to go with good luck charms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from our friends at Live Science, artifacts found in Japan may be ninja weapons, what? including possible forerunners to the well known throwing star. So these were just weapons. Yeah. You're just like, ha! Ah, there's a rock in your head. These might be the predecessor to the uh, to the shuriken. Uh, well, um, there's also uh, the, so, so certainly the, I see the resemblance in the one that has pokey bits coming out. Um, mm -hmm. the the donuts. Explain to me how a donut is like a shuriken. Uh, so this includes m multiple things. The yeah. Throwing star shuriken. Uh, I believe this is a clay caltrop. Oh yeah, uh, that does track. A makibishi caltrop, a spiky weapon to injure feet and, and horses. And that th in that case, the tetrahedral shape would make sense because you always want one part to be stepable. It's like it's like a mm -hmm. it's uh, b before we had Lego, we had caltrop. Drops. Right. Um, these were likely uh, uh, um, the weapon, the, the, quote, these were likely the weapons of a battle group which can move into action as ninjas, uh, says Iwata Akihiro from Saitama Prefectural Museum of History and Folklore. So now I'm thinking about it. The donut uh, rocks would mm -hmm. make sense as uh, like if you didn't sling. have a sling, right. you would certainly be able to take it on a string and then either let go yeah. and hold on to the string or just, just throw the whole it. thing and have a bunch of those ready to go. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Um, the flat throwing stones were, quote, used to stop the movement of the enemy who was going to attack a soldier at any moment while the enemy freezed, the soldier escaped. It's basically pocket sand basically all ninja weapons <laughs> well, and, are pocket and, and sand. by the way uh, this is something we covered in a segment of modern rogue it's right. you know we tend to think of the sensationalized 1980s americanized uh, ninja all as this this supreme garb. badass of all martial arts or whatever but but really uh ninjas as an idea they were harriers they attacked from the shadows they didn't kill from the shadows. They were they annoyed. annoyed from the shadows. <laughs> Got you. And, and, you know, somebody's trying to do their rounds, and it's like, badonk, ah, my head. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so they were just there to be annoying. Uh, yes, to, or to, to buy distract. you a second. To distract, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then, you know, you were dealing with swords, and so you you – if you're in close proximity, it's very dangerous, very vulnerable. So if you can get even a little bit of distance. Yeah. Close. Well, and, and think about it this way. Like all the ninja throwing weapons, like if you're throwing it, you're not close enough to stab them in the heart. And yeah. so like that, that, you might that as well sort of defines your, your arena of combat. <laughs> in a, in a pre-gun age, like that is really the only thing that matters is like, can I do damage while not being in range of you being able to stab me. Uh, there were archery. two types of weapons. There's the, Spears. oh dear, that'll kill me. And there's the, come on guys, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, despite being armed with these weapons, the Hojo clan's ninja uh, in those castles uh, could not save the castles and they fell to the Toyotomi and the Tokugawa clans. Ah, they should have they should have taken them god rocks and made <laughs> knives out of them. But big, I think they did big, a big L. A good job for like uh, what they guess were were weapons made in in uh, in a hurry, basically. Yeah. Under, yeah. under pressure. Um, so here we go. Oh no, they're coming! Sand these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's our only hope. It's just crazy enough to work. All right, one Five more picture. Five minutes later, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> one more picture for you guys. This is from our friends at the AP. What is this? Well, it looks like it's um, imagine all a bunch oh, of strawberries. Dear God, I know exactly what it all is. All mm -hmm. bound together into one like uh, a flat almost hamburger patty. That so is you, the world's largest strawberry. That lock is lock it in, Daniel. The world's 
largest strawberry. That's wow. a wrap. Yeah. Israeli farmer Chahi Ariel uh, is holding the latest Guinness World Record for the largest strawberry. How much do you think it weighs? Chahi uh, okay. Ariel. Wait, uh, by the way, for the audio He's listeners. Chahi Ariel. Wait, when you hear the words like world's largest pumpkin or whatever, you pick a, you picture like a Godzilla pumpkin. And it's always like a sad, deflated uh, you know, they don't like, live a good long lives. No, no. no. Gravity no. takes its toll immediately. <laughs> it's it's one of those strawberries. Oh, That's I right. feel sorry for that that this monstrosity. Uh, this is a little over a half pound, two hundred and eighty nine grams, ten ounces. Uh, this strawberry was picked on Chahi Ariel's farm near uh, Netan- uh, Netanya in central Israel in February, twenty twenty one. All right. How much Franken, uh, 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 like, is he trying to grow weird berries or, or is this like I mean, a random uh, thing that happens? My guess is you don't just, you know, go to your backyard and say, well, what's this? Well, I'll be danged if it's not the world's largest strawberry. My guess is you begin with the ending in mind yeah. Yeah, they, and you cultivate. They I would assume so. Yeah. yeah but I don't know. Try. Maybe this man is just like, I'm just trying to live a peaceful life <laughs> growing <was> strawberries <laughs> and I didn't ask for this attention. You know, you know, it'd be great is if like. Uh, I'm just Farmer Chahi Ariel. <laughs> he was really there to like uh, uh, steal water from his neighbor or something. And he's just like, oh, oh, dip. Is that the world's largest strawberry? And then just <laughs> makes up a story about how he found it under a, a couch cushion. <laughs> What a suspicious backstory for Farmer Chahi Ariel. He's pitching us a Seth Rogen movie. Exactly. <laughs> Whoa, I have the world's largest strawberry. <laughs> Seth Green is like, I didn't mean to be in your backyard, man. <laughs> hey, man, I'm a crazy Colombian drug dealer, and I collect the world's largest everything. Seth uh, Rogen is <laughs> Farmer Chahi Ariel in Oops, My Berry. See this? It's the largest contiguous, uh, co- t- contiguous brick of cocaine on the planet. <laughs> Be ashamed of anyone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, you broke the world's largest brick of cocaine. Now I got to clean it up. What are you going to replace it with? Uh, it better be a strawberry. It better uh. be a strawberry. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you were right in identifying that it looks um, bad. <laughs> no, it, look, it looks like a hamburger patty. Like imagine if, if you put a bunch of strawberries with the stems facing inward mm-hmm. and then you you made a little circle of it and that's what it looks like although it, we're it, only seeing it from one side so the other side might look even more horrifically it, deformed it does look i mean by deductive reasoning almost certainly they put the most attractive side towards the <laughs> exactly, camera which yeah. means it can only look worse on the other side but it, it almost looks like a defa- deflated pomegranate mm-hmm. yeah uh, uh, Ariel says, we waited a year for the results. That's right. Uh, they, for the results? The they, results being you plucked it? They Remember what I said? They, they picked it in February 2021. And then they, did it continue to grow? Uh, they, well, no, they, they kept it in, they said they kept it in a freezer and it uh, is no longer as pretty as it was. And it shrunk to about half the size that it was when they had plucked it. Uh, so is this for whatever reason is, Guinness kind of sat on their thumbs? So and waited. Is, is is the measurement from when they first picked it or now? That's a very good question, and I was not quite sure. The, the AP news did not give a Yagi lot of. Because Farmer Ariel uh, uh, has has a real case on his hands here. If he says it 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 deflated half, man, he should have a more impressive record. I mean, I I, I, I do have a proposal as to why the Guinness folks didn't just took him at his word, and it's probably because they're all like. Could you go back to talking about that giant brick of cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> I I think what happened here, and this is a guess because this is one of those stubby, short AP News stories that doesn't even link to anything. Yeah. Uh, World's <laughs> more record holders shortest AP story. <laughs> uh, I, I think what happened is they probably plucked it last year and measured it and then took a bunch of time or maybe samples to prove that it was grown cleanly or grown as an actual strawberry no steroids be yeah cause well i don't mean it, that's do the whole they, thing do, about they, do they steroid test for the guinness book of world records like do I, they care if you're pumping this thing full of hormones or not i think they care if it's i think they would i don't know i don't know i don't know if they check if it's got to be a specific type of strawberry ooh, ooh, or ooh. if it can be a cross fruit breed i, I got a question a snapple. Uh, would, would they accept it if okay picture picture you take a strawberry okay picture you take a little tiny uh, balloon of plastic and you just have a straw, and every day you just sort of you pump it a little bit, and it just gets it's all air inside. Yeah, but yeah. it's a genuine strawberry, and then you just then you just sort of like pop, and then slop that out, and it's got just a little laparoscopic scar 
Um, and then you're like, world's largest strawberry. And it's like, this is hollow. It's like I said, largest, that's volume. Exactly. And meanwhile, right. farmer Yahi Ariel's just stewing. <laughs> well, I, I know you really cheated me, bigger, boy. Biggest strawberry. I grew my weird strawberry patty <laughs> from a... From, from nothing, nothing. Um, <laughs> no balloons, <laughs> no, 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 not even another strawberry. Nope, just, 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 you just I you, manifested I, it. You, you, I'm <laughs> Farmer Yahi Ariel. I'm a man of miracles. Oh my goodness! Well, yeah. let's get, can we take a, a quick tour of your garden and please, see another? Please, please go ahead. Look. All right now, this yeah. th this one is very, very tall. What's that? Uh, what, what does it look like? Well, I mean, it kind of looks like a spear coming out the ground with weird nodules on the side. Yep. It's corn. <laughs> well, this is just average height for corn, then. Nope. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean, no? Moving on. <laughs> All right, what about this one? Yeah. This, uh, this one, it looks like an angry oak tree. <laughs> yeah, damn right it is. Hey, what is it? I punched it. <laughs> so it's just an oak tree that yeah. became angry when yeah. you punched it. It's been very cross lately. <laughs> okay. I had to teach it a lesson. <laughs> oh, well, by the time that it gets out on the street, it's not going to have me to fend for it anymore. Now, when you say you taught it a lesson, yeah. what did it do to upset you? Oh, it was just talking politics. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the next thing you know, I was just like, I don't need to hear your mess. Okay. You're just a uh, garbage man. <laughs> Pow. <laughs> You punched? Garbage. Punched it, yeah. Wow. So, sorry, you said the words garbage man. <laughs> yeah. was, was it about a garbage man? No, he was just talking all that mess. That mess? Yeah. Hot mess. Yeah, how, exactly. How, the how way did, a garbage truck would. How, how does a oak tree vocalize? I, I, look, if you're not a farmer, I'm not going to explain this to you. Like, this is my <laughs> okay, profession. Right. I'm right. Farmer Yagi Did you go to University? Yeah, I'm Farmer Yagi Ariel, man. I, I have the world's largest strawberry. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, look, I'm a world class man at this. All right, now, uh, 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 this last <laughs> bit here confuses me. Yeah. I don't see anything here. There's just a plaque that reads Audio Elder. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> what what is that? That's where I shot and killed the audio elder, but I didn't have money for a grave, so I just went to uh, Plaques R Us, and I I just threw it on the ground. No, it uh, might have moved because there was a strong wind the other day, but no, somewhere not, around here I shot and buried the audio elder. I, I'm not familiar with the laws in this country, but Israel. But, but yeah, but doesn't it seem like murdering there, they somebody have is is not something that you would want to put a placard up to? You want to talk politics did? like my oak? No, I don't. You, care. you want to see? <laughs> Congratulations, Chahi. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Chahi? Chahi, yeah, not Yahi. Oh, uh, you're, you were doing a different guy, so it's, I was, it's cool. Yeah. It's good. And maybe that's how you pronounce it, though. Oh. Maybe Yahi, Yahi, Yahi. I guess it's C-H. I mean, don't get it, it wrong. It might be Yahi. Otherwise, yeah. you'll end up like the audio elder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, I feel like the Listen Guinness stuff is always slow, right? They're very official. They're very I know. pomp and circumstance. I like, know. They pour half the pint, and then they wait. They all wear those and then weird they pour hats the rest with a giant it. ostrich feather poking out the top. Exactly. And they have and a guy. They have an impressionist to pretend he's whistling a fife. That's always the thing with them. Classic impressionists. Uh, always, always act. drunk on their Guinness. <laughs> yep, sipping, sipping on it. Sip, sipping Guinea. This, yep, that's right. That's exactly what you hear on an Ellie song. Sipping Guinea. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, Let's that's, not bring the Italians into this. That's. Mm, that's uh, my stories for today. Do you guys want to do some picks? Yeah, I do. What Let's do, do picks. Uh, listen, I discovered this completely on my own. God dang I'm it. <laughs> awesome for finding it. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it so much I watched it twice. And then my daughters started playing the Stanley Parable because it reminded them of it. Uh, Severance on um, on Apple TV Plus. Pretty great. Uh, I like good. it a lot. Uh, the The... The pitch is, hey, uh, if there was a job where you could split your consciousness and there was just you that l goes into work and then walks out of work and then there's you that is at work, um, uh, what would it look like? What would it look like if you split your life into oh. never at work and always at work? Gotcha. Uh, and I think they do a good job for like a con the thing. I don't know if you felt this, Brian, watching those two episodes that are out. Um, it felt like a concept show. 
isn't trying to do two concepts, right? It's a it's a sci-fi show about a thing, and it's not also a murderer's around. Like there's there's not like a second hat on a hat, which I, I like because there's a lot to explore here. Well, and there's there's only two. We're only two episodes in, so there's lots of runway for them to screw this up. But for right now, uh, they're they're soft playing a little bit of retro computer aesthetic, which I always love, you know, your kind of portal CRT monitors or whatever. Mm -hmm. This, like, even the people working don't really know what they do. Like at one point, spoiler for episode two, they're all like, what do we do? And they're like, you look at all these numbers and you find some that, you know, are scary. And you just put them in the bucket. And he's like, well, that's nonsense. And then they're like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. Those don't belong. They're like, you see it now. And so, yeah. uh, but but also, um, they haven't heavy handed it yet. Uh, this is directed by Ben Stiller. Uh, you could look at it through the lens of a meditation on public versus private life where, you know, in public, you Ben Stiller, I assume, has to play the Ben Stiller character, you know, and then you may want to switch off at other, other times. Um, then there's the the whole reason I left my day job back in uh, at the end of the century was because uh, time was passing too fast for me. It was uncomfortable the way just a whole day would blip out. And yeah. really, I can't tell you much about what happens. So just it's just nudging that a little more to the extreme. And then it considers the, the opposite side of it. Like uh, the people who are working, they're all like, uh, wait, so we never get to leave? It's like, no, you leave every day. It's like, yeah, but the moment I leave, I walk right back in. And they're like, yeah, but, you know, you decided to do that. And and so to the people doing the work, uh, they, uh, they, they ex live in this perpetual existence of just always doing work. And it, it what's interesting is the ways that it, the office that they basically live in, but they don't sleep because they're not awake during the sleeping hours, but... Uh, how interesting there's only like four of them in the program and they're very like infantilized a lot you know their boss feels like a daycare teacher a lot of times they, they work hard for rewards like finger traps and waffle parties and uh and so how, how much do you think what you are seeing now like is this going to be one of them shows where by episode eight it's like oh this is really about this whole other thing and what we what we got into it with this fairly simple concept is really just the the door knocker on a gigantic you know uh, haunted castle. This, this feels to me. Tell me, Bryce, if this tracks with you. Somewhere in the realm of universes of sci-fi, close to like a, an eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, or a being John Malkovich, where it's like, yes, this is a very weird thing that is recognized as odd in an otherwise sane rational universe yes. and and it's not so crazy that the world is freaking out they're all like yeah, yeah that's kind of a gross procedure because uh, basically you just get chipped and then when you go up and down the elevator you switch over to one timeline and mm -hmm. switch over to the other and and uh they very quickly get to the point where uh the question of what kind of person would put somebody in a perpetual work existence and what kind of awful being must you be if you're the one who clearly who did, did it? it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um uh, and interesting. Yeah, it's very cool. And I I, I love Ben St Ben Stiller. I've been I've been a fan of his directing since Cable yeah. Guy. They they're great. The the two episodes that are out are are, are great. I'm uh, into it. I don't even know that there was a Ben Stiller show. Yeah, it's 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 brand new. It just came out on Apple TV. So, Severance. That's uh yeah, I really like it. Nice. That. Uh Justin, do you have a pick? Season two of Raised by Wolves. Hmm. Started watching it. I like it so far. Mm -hmm. I got to say, it's one of those shows that season one relied so heavily on you being first introduced to this world. And the world was kind of unfolding. And it is bordering on sci-fi shaggy dog. Where mm -hmm. it's just every new thing. It it kind of sounds you say like sci-fi. You mean S Y F Y? Sci-fi channel. I, I yeah. I mean, I, 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 there there is there are some things where it's like, oh wow, where where the budget go for that? But like, uh, the it kind of sounds like you could just 
read off all of the plot synopsises as John Lovitz's liar character <laughs> on SNL. <laughs> like, like, yeah, see? And, and, and then, then I'm and the then, son of God. And then she gets pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't have a baby. It's a snake. Yeah, a yeah, snake. That's, that's the, the ticket. ticket. Uh, but the snake, it's, it's about to kill people, but then... It's a vegetarian snake. Well, yeah. all right. I was only on episode two. Okay, yeah. well, there's spoiler sense. alert. I believe that's an episode two <laughs> spoiler alert. It's yeah, not yeah, episode okay. two. It's fine. No, anyway. But there's a bigger snake. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, These are all spoilers for the current season. <laughs> <laughs> but watch it. It's a good show. Yeah, I, 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 will, I, I will say that there are the elements that continue to beat for me uh, is the meditation on like very, very, very basic decisions of free thinking versus community, which is kind of like the the general beating heart of the premise is like um, amongst all the sci-fi rigmarole, it is what is the worth of self-determination? What is the worth of of community? And bringing it together on this alien planet after we have torn ourselves apart as a society on the basis of those questions, you you see this kind of stuff. The only thing that, is frustrating is that especially this season, it just kind of feels like a lot of it is like, oh, okay, well, we're gonna shake these characters up in a bag and throw them out, and and yeah. now we're we're gonna see them interact with each other. But that being said, it is unlike anything else on television, and to that, I very much appreciate it. It's it's <laughs> I, I found that I'm enjoying season two much much more now that I have just relaxed my standards. It's not season one. Season one was a show that absolutely commanded your full attention and you felt like if you stopped watching for a second you you is your fault that you don't know what's going on whereas season two is so you know what you need to go to the bathroom go take a break come back you know, it'll be clear it what's going definitely on definitely feels like they've invalidated a lot of the energy and and uh, it's just setting from season one well I but i will i, I will say where I uh, caught up with all of the episodes so far, and I won't s spoil details, but I do feel like they are getting a little bit. They're they're solving problems, and it, they're solving some problems in a good way, um, but in a frustrating way of like, oh yeah, obviously that's that. I forgot that that's that. Why didn't you just remind me that that was that? Because so much of the rest of the show is like holding kind of holding your hand this season. Yeah, I mean I think part of what gets lost is that the magic of that first season especially with the concept of android actors, mm -hmm. quote unquote. I mean like like they're acting android as characters. androids. Yeah. yeah. But the acting there is is really what captivates you uh is that you don't know who to trust. Mm -hmm. You're constantly being introduced to these people. You constantly think that you have a sense of them and you are figuring out their honesty, you are figuring out their motivations as you go along. And it's a fairly large cast. Like, like there are, you know, 12, 13 people that you have to kind of pay attention to. And by the time that we get to season two, we know who they are. We know their general characters. And like, so you, you're, I think what they realized was, uh, you know, they, they had to kind of reset everybody on different pathways. And, and so the first two episodes so far is a lot of them to me being like oh okay well now this character is really going to care about me and this one's going to care about bing there's a little bit in season two of what i imagine as some version of um like uh uh this will either be a minus or a plus depending on what kind of story you're on the hunt for um there's a lot of oh you know it'd be neat is if they had that and now decision gate you could either write that in the story where that is made and explained and all that, or you could just turn a corner and just that's there. And, uh, and, and there's a lot of turning the corner and just that's there. And at first I found it really off putting, but now as I've re relaxed my expectations from the show, I'm just like, okay, I get it. We're just, you know, when we want a thing, it'll just be there. Cause that's cool. It, it definitely feels like, It feels like they're doing, it feels like the concept and the story that they're trying to tell, I think will be hokey. And they've done a good job of telling it so far. Season one was great, set up a lot of mystery. And now that we're starting to see some of the answers and we're starting to see some of, um, there's, there's some like magical stuff in this show. 
There's, do, do you mean magical as in like rapturous good storytelling or or BS I, lazy writing? And, and neither of those. I mean, if, okay. this is this like is a, magic exists in if, this universe. Yeah, it feels like a setting where this is beyond like very high tech. This feels very magic. It's something that happened this week in this week's episode made me go like, I guess that explains some stuff. But that's really stupid compared to the way that we've been using technology in this show. Well, and also it's like it's at a certain level. Um, you know, it's like, okay, magic, by which we mean either supernatural forces or nanobots. Functionally, it's magic. <laughs> You're like, you, you need a thing, it's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I guess I guess that also, it's like, right. the, it, but it seems like the big question of this season kicked off by the ending of last season is everybody's relationship with the planet. And, and exactly how sentient mm -hmm. the planet itself is or some being within the planet is. And that's one of those things where it's like, it's inherently less interesting than are these characters going to kill themselves? All the, are these refugees from a war going to carry that war on yeah. in this new place? And it's like, I, I do feel like the show box themselves in on a, on a few things in terms of taking the characters too far down certain certain roads uh where now they're kind of going back like I don't I'm only two episodes in so I don't know exactly how much uh finding like-minded creatures are going to reboot our main female character to the killing machine that she once was I don't know uh, they, but they certainly seem to be leaving the door open for that or or giving a pathway to do that, which would invalidate one of the main character elements that happened through season one. We don't know how fast our man in the woods is going to build up his new society, but it certainly seems like it's going to happen fairly fast, considering the fact that his defining character was being rejected from society by the end of season one. So it's like, it, it is one of those things where it's like, like, oh, okay, well, if we're just going to go, if, if these people were more interesting doing that, then why did we, why did we go down that road to begin with? So in, in terms of just one last thought on, on the taste of, of I don't know, the, the pastiche of, of character flavors, like it reminds me a little bit, and I know this is a loaded term, please nobody freak out but it reminds me a bit of lost in that you could see a single episode of lost with a character that you've seen over eight years or whatever and say wait is this back when they are good or bad when i do or don't like them because you go through various iterations yeah. of that and so and even at the beginning of season two you start to see that realignment and then even midway through season two other characters realign you know and mm -hmm. and so you it, it's uh if that if that bugs you if that bums you out then just know that yeah and although although I, I do think that, that that is something where it's like you, you expect that, like, you know, in a show about self-determinism versus community, it's not like there's a winner, right? <laughs> there are there are good and bad actors on all on all sides of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Race Rebels. I'm like, I like it. I'm I'm I, where, I, I where have we were it. to where we were last night on as that episode four or episode five, whatever, uh, made me feel like, OK, we're writing this ship. We're figuring this out. Um, so and all, all, all so. that being said. My actual pick, if you have not finished Peacemaker, finish Peacemaker. Peacemaker, uh, so f it's going to take a lot to dethrone that as my favorite show of the year. Uh, and it finished so strong. Uh, uh, just, just great. Like, like uh, uh, I, has made me excited for anything else. And the fact that James Gunn is like, got a blank check, can do whatever the hell he wants. There's a few moments in the finale that lets you know he has a lot of control with uh, uh, Warner with, Brothers and DC uh, IP. Uh, so uh, go go further, sir. You're doing great. Very cool. I we we're gonna cover season. Uh, we're just gonna do all of season one in Cord Killers this week, and uh, uh, I did not <laughs> physically have enough time to finish all of the show. So I, I I I only watched a few episodes, but I still I still really like it, and I'm I'll be fine listening to spoilers. But yeah, it's it's really good. It's it's one of those shows where uh, where you're like, oh yes, like uh, I feel the writer's signature style, and it doesn't feel. It, it and it fits it feels like it fits well uh, and by the way kind of the new renaissance of the single writer like yeah. taylor sheridan i believe is the yellowstone 
guy, uh, mm-hmm. and and James Gunn wrote every episode of Peacemaker by himself. Now that was during the pandemic, right? So he had he had time on his hands, but it's like he already did it once. He said he's gonna do it again. Uh, you know, those always high risk, high reward, right? <laughs> you know, Absolutely. the the risk is, boy, if he follows a thread and there isn't nobody in the room to be like, this sucks, then then that's a problem. Uh, and sometimes it's high reward because it all feels cohesive. It feels uh, like a great put together show. Yeah. Uh, I've got a pick. Uh, this is a, a video game. This is relatively uh, new, a little bit of a hot topic. Um, but uh, this is a game called Vampire Survivors. Have you guys heard of Vampire Survivors? No, no. Um, this I, is. I prefer not to think of them. <laughs> this is. Uh, you, you've played twin. Aren't they called others vampires? <laughs> like, like, is that the point? Is once you survive a vampire attack, you. Oh, you are could, one. We could get into the whole thing of why it's called what it is, but okay. Um, uh, this is you've, if you've played a Joyce a, a twin stick shooter. Game, oh my God! This is straight up Robotron. Uh, it's this is a this is a twin stick shooter, but it is only one stick. It auto fires for you. Uh, so you you are like running around. It's a very it's like three dollars. You're running around this little pixel RPG RPG um, space, and you gain power ups to shoot and attack at guys. But it all happens automatically. You don't click an attack button. You just move around and avoid uh, the enemies. Um, and the ad- and the enemies don't attack. They they kind of shamble, right? They have different speeds. But that's what's a really interesting thing about it is because this is not a f- a fancy game. This is not a lot of frills. It's just it's it's a feeling. It's a little bit of a feeling. Uh, I there's an there's an interview with the guy, one of the guys who made it. And their team used to work on casino games, like okay. slot machines. Yeah. And when you play this game, you really start to feel it, especially when you get um, a treasure chest, because like the game pauses, you click a button to open it, and then uh, all of these like lights and coins and music comes out and starts to play, and it, and it even sounds like it, you know, with the the. Uh, Is this Japanese? I don't believe so. Oh, okay. I don't that was, believe so. Because that was one of the things that, that surprised me going to Japan was how much video game and gambling culture are kind of fused and, and won, at least in the public parlors uh, mm. uh, in, in, in Japan. Yeah. Um, and this, is, this is early access on Steam. Um, so uh, I, I believe there will be more updates. There's a, lot of, there's, a, there's a lot to unlock and play already but i i've really been enjoying it as um something as catchy as a mobile phone game mm. um but doesn't feel like just a mobile like a it's just porting over a mobile phone to steam it actually feels like a really i do love that big, idea of of just a like what's the coolest thing that can happen in a game where you acquire a lot of weapons and you shoot a lot of things a lot of things get shot and you use all your weapons and you use them all perfectly yeah. that's the coolest possible thing that could happen and so it's like all right if you remove the skill to do that like what is left in the game and can you make that super interesting uh that that is that is a i love those those game design decisions to be like like i don't know what if you just get to do the cool thing yeah it's 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 very cool and it's a it's a roguelike game so or a rogue light game uh so you get power-ups and as you level up you choose what weapons you want to upgrade yeah. and between runs you spend coins and all sorts of stuff i think it's i think it's very fun it's very addictive uh me and my friend were playing it last night and we just kept trading off the, the game um but there you go vampire survivors uh, pretty cool. there, there, there's a game that i would love to know if you have experienced uh, i played all of one minute of it and i was like this is terrible i hate it it's a uh, um something a uh, needy streamer overload have you seen this no i haven't seen this needy it's stream- quite literally our jobs the game <laughs> in which you wake up you have a desktop and Twitter is erupting, and you have to reward people who are saying good things oh, and uh-huh. ignore or mute people who are saying creepy things. Oh, interesting. And meanwhile, you have to stream to gather more followers <laughs> who oh, give you more power-ups. That's kind of cool. I like, I've like. i played similar <laughs> games. I have not played this one. That, it's interesting. There's, <laughs> there's one called uh, Not for Broadcast, I believe. And um, uh, yes, that's it. And it is literally my job. <laughs> you, wow. You are like a video switcher. 
um, they have like live action uh, multi camera like sessions that you are live switching through. You're dealing with like curse words and um, the bleep button, all sorts of stuff. So there's uh, uh, there's a weird there's an interesting there. I bet there's a uh, I don't know a, a philosophical paper in uh, I don't know the the habit of making video games that are just work. <laughs> well, that it, are realistic, yeah. But but also keep in mind, like I assume like NFL players play Madden. And as a mm -hmm. matter of fact, the, it was a remarkable moment. Like they've, they've re-engineered the way uh, uh, the cameras move in the game to be more like the video game. And also uh, uh, in uh, NBA games, I remember there was uh, quite a discussion about somebody playing, you know, specifically to run out the shot clock or whatever. Mm -hmm. One of those moves that you would make in the video game not uh, uh, the, the the big defining moment in in the NFL was uh, when a player who had either caught the ball for a touchdown or, or an interception ran just got parallel it. to the goal line because he wanted to kill more clock, oh, which right. is oh, yeah. only something that you it's would do Madden. in right. yeah in 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 Madden. Uh, uh, but he realizing that that was the smart thing to do uh, did that in 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 the real world. And I think, well, uh, I don't know, we're, we're going to get into a whole topic about it, but I would love yeah. to talk about that another time because cause those are those are games where the game is very, feels very different from the activity, where like this not for broadcast game is very much exactly it's the exact what I, uh, same I can vouch thing. for needy streamer. Uh, that Twitter <laughs> felt like Twitter and those comments felt like real Twitter comments. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it, everybody here on the Weird Things Podcast. You yep. feeling good, Justin and Brian? Yeah. Yes, I am. Uh, been... uh, you're You're my president come back oh. to us garfield oh <laughs> brian said not my president yeah uh it's been weird <laughs> i don't blame me i voted for normal <laughs> 112 <laughs> likes <laughs> <laughs> one shot one kill, one shot, right. one kill baby. Uh, i have an idea for something we can talk about in after things and also i'm sure you guys will want to talk about world's greatest con sure uh, so um i think if you need a break now's the time to do it yeah brb Otherwise, uh, uh, we'll get some. Hold on, wait before you leave. Oh, oh yeah, N number, number check. That's a good mysterious number. Mm. Good number, okay. sixty-nine. Oh. Lol. Lol. <laughs> <You're low. laughs> hey, Tiny Justin. Yo, man, what's going on? I, if can you, I, I'm, I would like you to be on the lookout if sure. you are, just yeah. while you're here in the studio. Yeah for a PlayStation 5 controller because I lost mine I think at I think when I did the back to the future thing where would it, so it would be in here well I don't know cuz stuff moves stuff moves around here it but it, it was over there and on the stage where we did where uh we had done it but I don't know if it moved I don't know if the kids picked it up I don't know but if you see a PlayStation 5 controller just let me know yeah I will what does it look like um it's white it's a white it's, controller. It's a white controller. Yeah. I've never I've never seen a PlayStation Five. Um, I mean, I guess I saw the box because Brian bought one for. Oh right, for uh, uh, Penny, Penny. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, it's one of these white ones. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. With black and white. Oh yeah, it looks like Eva from Wally. -E. Yeah, that's right. It looks like Eva. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll be I'll be on the lookout. Okay. I just because it, it was like I mean that was like three or four weeks ago at this point, but I I I've like looked all over my apartment. I'm pretty sure it's not there. I've looked around the studio multiple times. I'm pretty sure it's not here, but stuff moves around. Yeah. So, but I don't and I don't want to buy another one. These these jams. No, are you expensive. should find it. I mean, to be totally honest, I would. I think you might be on the trail. Where you might need to go to the Brushwood household yeah. and see if they if they're heavy one controller because yeah. that feels like a Bonnie or Brian are are wandering around. They're like, oh my god, how did this get here? I mean, bring it back. Yeah, I might have to ask about that because that sounds that's that's the other thing I, I've uh, yeah not sure about, but um yeah. So we just want to do a a, a a a world's greatest con uh, analysis. And I've I've got another topic I would like to talk about sure. after Greatest Con. So well, here okay, let's do that first, and then yeah. we'll get into Greatest Con because otherwise we're just gonna drone on and on and on. Okay. Uh, did you need a break, Justin? Hell no. All right. Well, let's uh, then let's do some after things. Why don't we? Let's. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Here we go. In three, two. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined, as always, with Brian Brushwood. Yo, President Garfield was great. And Justin Robert Young. I wish I hadn't burned my normal joke. <laughs> this is the show about being creative professionals, uh, doing work online in the online age, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, uh, this week, uh, as we're recording this February 21st, um, uh, Brian and Justin are is still in the middle of a campaign, really, of putting the word out about World's Greatest Con season. Beginning, taking our first mm -hmm. steps into a wider world. Very first steps. Can you tell us, uh, can you set the scene for us? When when does the new season come out? What can people listen to today? Uh, well, you can listen to, uh, the, the full season comes out February 28th. Uh, you can listen to the preview today, but but didn't you have another topic that we wanted to do first? Oh yes, okay. Um, I I we I talked about this. We'll, we'll get back to what's going on. I yeah. talked about this a little while ago, but the idea of toil. Do you remember when we talked about toil? Mm. Um, uh, you mean work? Yes, <laughs> within the realm of work. Yeah, the the idea of um uh, a busy work that has to get done, um, but. Uh, probably you don't you shouldn't need to do the things like uh, uh, uh we, we talked about it in the context a little bit menial tasks menial tasks but things that have to get done yeah um in uh for, for for that that document was a google like server guideline thing but but you could imagine hey if if the servers need to have a button clicked every six hours do you make it someone's job to click a button every six hours or do you write a program that just clicks the button when it's time that is the, uh, that is a way of eliminating toil. Clicking that button is toil. Sure. I mean, then also you just have to put somebody in charge of watching the program to make sure that the program does its job. But then that person can watch many programs. It can, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I... Um, I, I don't know. This is this is very dom very domestic. But I had I've had a couple of instances in the home of doing that, of like making a small change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that ends up saving you all this grief and uh, turmoil, or not even turmoil, but just collective how many hours of your life are wasted doing this. So, like, one of them was, this was a few years ago, um, uh, scissors, okay? I used to have a, a, I have a little key box in the middle of my apartment. Yep. You put a thing of scissors in there, and you can reach it from the kitchen. You can get it from the living room, whatever. What happens to scissors? They, uh, they, they become they go dull. away they go missing they they right. don't go home they they live where they last were and so that gets very frustrating of like oh they'll I, they're supposed to just be right here where are they oh it's in the other room oh it's in the opposite room uh, so how do you solve that do you get better about put it do you put a tracker on the scissors do you put a little alarm or do you just buy two I think scissors? you just buy more scissors you just uh, buy more scissors uh, I, I, but some people don't even think about that but then but then what you want to know what happens is you find out that if you buy seven pairs of scissors they all wind up in the same place eventually and that's true this is a, a that's what i did with remotes i got so tired of remotes wandering off i just have like and then and, and now like five roku remotes have gone missing <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh this is an adage i got from uh dubai friday um which probably got it from somewhere else but uh, uh it was about nail clippers it was the same idea but uh if you have two nail clippers you have one nail clipper and if you have one nail clipper you have none <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, to, like, and so, uh, li little things like that, little commodity, e even this. Okay, I have a water pitcher. I have like a little filter. I'm I'm giving these examples so you have time to think. I swear to God, like I this. buckled in for like three hours of Andy Rooney. Uh, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have a water pitcher, is uh, because I don't like to drink the tap water, and uh, normally I keep it in the fridge. And I got I got this from my family in Arizona because I saw that they do this. Do you know what they do? They just leave the water pitcher out on the counter. Cause it's just easier. I and now I just leave it in the sink because it's right there. It's just where the water spigot is. You're not we're dealing with putting it up, put it in the fridge, put it. In, did I refill it? I mean, that's it's that's right there. that's a Pooh's wisdom that he brought uh, with to the Simpsons when he lived with them briefly. Uh, he said, "What is all this corn doing in the in the cupboard? This will never move." So he put it out on the countertop, and as yeah. they went to school, the kids are like, "Oh, oh fresh corn. corn, yeah!" Yeah. I mean, I do that even even my morning routine. I've like grouped all of my little pills and powders and shakes and stuff. <laughs> Into one your <laughs> and, your, <laughs> and your bellows exactly his two drops of laudanum daily <laughs> and put it right next to my fish oil tank 
Um, and so, so things like that. Um, so I, I I, before we lose the thread of the scissors, uh, uh, yeah. uh, this is a real thing. At some point, uh, uh, the the ice machine stopped working on our, our refrigerator, and it stopped getting warm enough on the freezer side. So now we have just two refrigerators. We have a freezer yeah. that can't get cold enough to make ice. Oh, no. uh, and so, um, but at some point, Callie. Uh, like, oh, oh I, I couldn't get the, the cheese wrappers open or whatever for the stick cheese. They, 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 yeah. they, they wouldn't tear out. So, so I just put some scissors uh, by, by the, the cheese sticks. And uh, at some point, the scissors fell into the place where ice comes out. And uh, oh. it was really – so now I just leave scissors there, and I'm waiting for the right moment when somebody who doesn't know that there are always scissors yeah. in that cup holder. Like, I'll be like, oh, I need to cut. <laughs> I need some I need scissors, to go, and I'm just gonna dispense some scissors into my hand. That's amazing. <laughs> and use them for. I thought you meant like just in the little no. cubby there. No, just, you it, just in the shoot actual. Out. No, in the you, you hit it, wow. it goes, and then you just have scissors. <laughs> That's great. It seems dangerous, maybe. I mean, uh, the, the rounded kid scissors, oh, which so, makes it even better. So I, I would say, uh, uh, Bryce, what this kind of gets to is, is my belief. Uh, that we only, if you think of our brains like computers, there are only so many cycles that we have at any given time. And the more that you can optimize the cycles that you have for the things that either make you feel happy or productive or make you money, the better your life's going to be, the more that you are, 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 are using them on other stuff, including what you are describing as the, 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 the toil or whatever, that it's harder for you to achieve your goals. And so whenever you get into these and these arguments normally happen around technology of like, well, why would, why, why do we need cameras on our phones? I already have a camera. And it's like, because that's, even if it's five milliseconds faster, right. That is worthwhile. Like, in fact, it might be the most worthwhile. The best thing. camera is the one that you have with you. Right. A hundred percent. Exactly. Right. You don't have to think about it. And so, However, while I am not like a feng shui guy, mm. I do believe that like if you do have that spot where if you buy seven scissors and they all end up in that place, you need to listen to yourself <laughs> you got more problem. than try to be like, like, no, you should be like, this is where scissors live. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I am always using scissors in this area and I am leaving them here no matter how much I, I, I want to believe that like, oh no, but if I leave them all over, then I'll always have them. No, I'm, I'm this, my, my world is centered around this scissors location. Mm -hmm. Honor it, make it, make it true. And, and I think a reason that this happens um, is, is a lot of times because uh, if I think about this in terms of like a creative or a project, the, the a reason that this might happen uh, would be because, um, Oh, I totally lost my whole thing. Just the whole thing walked right out the door. Uh, well, I uh, I would love to say that these are great plans that both of you have that work uh. when you don't have um, a, 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 a partner and three gremlins that relocate everything. Sure. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, my, my, my wife and I play this fun game where she hides things that I need. Now, she calls it putting stuff away. <laughs> but it's, you're only putting it away is if I if if I get informed where the new location for things are. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that the, maliciously to my wife. Really? Yeah. Like <laughs> well, because I don't know. No, I just don't know where things are put away. She does know where things are put away, and so often if it's her thing, you're like, oh, two could play. Because no, <laughs> I am a put things away guy. Yeah. She leaves stuff out more than I do. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I will often put it in dumb places so she can't find it, and then I will hope I'm hopefully behaviorally <laughs> making forcing her into the situation where she puts her stuff away faster. Yeah. Put it put it away. Don't put it down. This is a passive aggressive. <laughs> but uh, anyway i don't know if if uh, i i just noticed that and i thought you know um oh i remember so i think i think maybe a hypothesis a reason that this happens in this build is because we start things um uh maybe from a place of need Necess uh, say in the scissors example this is gonna be a weird one uh i can only afford one pair of scissors so i can't just have multiple scissors okay, where they need. Okay, I see where this is headed. GoFundMe.com/slash/scissors <laughs> for Bryce. Bryce scissors. And Bryce scissors. <laughs>
<laughs> and and as you know, as either the project comes along or maybe your financial state improves, what have you, you're able to to do these things. But you've kind of accepted the the toil that you have to of well, I can only do one scissors. Oh, I'm so I'm so used to only one scissors. Um, and then you realize it's like two dollars. It would be two dollars to get another pair of scissors. Oh, I mean, uh, 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 granted, this is coming from a situation where where I've got a little bit more uh, flexibility in the budget these days. But I would highly encourage anybody, especially if you have Amazon Prime, yes, that if you if you find a situation, you're like, ah, oh, damn, I need a look it up and buy it immediately. Yep, like just it it it. All you're gonna, all you are doing by by denying yourself that and saying, ah, oh, but I have one. It's in the thing. Especially if it's under ten dollars. If it's under twenty bucks, just buy it. Your 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 brain space is is worth it. And and you know what? If you're in a position where money's tight, make put it on a wish list. Make a new list on Amazon for it. Uh, this is this is my garage list and i'm gonna need this for all the garage things i'm gonna do do literally anything uh that choice paralysis is real Mm -hmm. uh i i don't know how many years i wanted to make sure that i bought the right rock speakers when i got around to buying rock speakers and then one day it's like just buy literally any rock speakers and find something out you know because they're they're 60 bucks for a pair or whatever right yeah um uh similarly like Three years ago, I bought a wireless keyboard and mouse. The keyboard has since stopped working, yeah. but I keep using the mouse, and it's like, oh, I should get a keyboard, but I want to get the right keyboard. And then, mm-hmm. like, four days ago, I was at my mom's place, and I'm like, what's this? I just this? took hers. It, well, well, no, it, it, it was just a <laughs> it's a Logitech something, something. It's It's got a built-in mouse. Uh, bada bing, 28 bucks. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this just a reminder. Little life hack. Just buy things. Buy they, things. Well, keep, <laughs> keep the engine of commerce. Keep yes. this world a twirling. Re-ex- yes. Re-examine the things, the things that you've committed to, and ways. If 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 it's it's always good to audit yourself and say, oh, why yes. do I do this this way? Can't and I do this way faster? Also, click on my affiliate link. <laughs> the uh, the way I the metaphor that I hold in my mind is uh, mental real estate. Like I'm, mm-hmm. you suddenly realize in a world where I wake up and I make decisions about programming, and you and I write together, and then we have to figure out how to you know play. Uh, needy streamer overload in real life and so on. <laughs> yeah. It's like, where does the decision for a $28 wireless keyboard belong? Yeah. It's like certainly not taking up about two minutes a day every day of my life, which is what it's currently doing. And yeah. So it's like, nope, I'm going to I'm gonna buy the wrong thing so I don't even have to think about it. And also, I think what does get undervalued is how much those moments derail your day, how much those moments derail your focus, how much uh, uh, if that moment didn't exist where you were like, oh crap, I need to do that. And I, I, oh, when, how many times have I done this? Like those things have a material cost to your happiness, to your productivity. Um, uh, at least that's my, well, and, and you're, you're and- robbing other humans of your focus and your attention because as abundant as I like to keep my mentality, the fact is when it comes to attention, that is a zero sum game. Every moment you're paying attention to one thing, you're not paying attention to another sure. thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, in the chat, and I think these, this is a fine, uh, a good critique. Um, uh, unsafe DB level says you're killing the earth with consumerism, um, uh, but it's this. It, it, this is not saying when you feel bad, get do retail therapy. This is when you have. I think when you have a hurdle, see if you need to keep jumping over it, or if you can walk around. Like for example. Uh, this is a no cost thing. I have these. I have a char. I have a little charger in my living room, and I have I have a rug. I don't like where the charger's at, but it's right there because that's where the power is. So Buy what another? I, and no, I'm going to. I'm gonna get a cord and run it. I'm gonna run it under the cat under yeah. the carpet. Cut a hole through that and just poke the wires through the carpet, and then it will be in the place where I want it to be. Yeah, that's that is a no cost thing. This is not about buying things that you need. Yes, right. But it is about Man, like the water jug thing. That's not, I didn't buy a new jug. I just put it in the sink now. Yeah. And then that keeps the sink clean. Anyway, just <laughs> <laughs> the, the opposite of, of the so, consumerism yeah, is what I'm, yeah. I'm Also, but here. consumerism too. And mostly on Amazon because uh, we have a lot of stock in the house. <laughs> uh, so uh, World's Greatest Con Season 2. Mostly buy it two, on Amazon. Uh, coming out next week, the, the 28th. Yeah, dude. For, uh, episode one. Episode one. Uh, 
So uh, what can you tell us? Uh, well, if, uh, first of all, if anybody hasn't listened to it, uh, maybe give season one a listen. It's only three and a half hours long for the entire story. It's one Very tale in, in four chapters, uh, each one with, uh, you know, they're all tasty meals on their own. But but uh, this time it's going to be five uh, indep independent stories, about an hour long each. Um, it's really exciting. And now comes the hard part where we have to ramp up the enthusiasm, the excitement, get the hype engine going, but also not give away literally everything because there's part of me that's so excited to just, I want to share it with the world. Uh, yeah. If anybody who is not, uh, go listen to the newest episode of you are not so smart, uh, which is a great podcast by David McRaney. And, uh, Brian was the guest is the guest, the current guest on the current episode of you are not so smart. Uh, it, it, it's a great, I mean, I, I could not think of a better, uh, you know, sell job, uh, uh, but really like a, 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 a good under, uh, overview in which he really grocks what we're going for. Absolutely. We would never like one of the things that is sort of buried beneath the surface is we talk about cognitive biases and the way our brains are bro broken and how people can take advantage of it. We would never put that on th front street. That's like third place on the tiers uh, you know, first is the story, second is the Brian, and then third, we're well, also you have, if you're not careful, you just might learn something. Yeah. Um, and then, um, uh, but at any rate, he puts that on Front Street, and it was really cool to hear somebody do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, uh, hopefully more, more promo stuff. Brian's going to do an AMA. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go, uh, get cleaned up so I can take a, proper proof photo <laughs> nice. for that so so i'll do that next month where, where, that would be on the ama uh, yeah sub yeah yeah okay so so in terms of kind of getting an overview of your promo campaign here so you've got a uh uh uh, uh you're, you're doing appearances right you're on your mm -hmm. smart and, and these other shows uh you've got a trailer out uh, uh preview not i mean preview. Uh, uh this was something that that initially Brian, there was a story that had kind of bounced around a few drafts of episodes. Uh, that was Brian's history with game shows, uh, how close he got to being on game shows, game shows he's been on uh, that just never really fit. But I was like, oh, man, this will be perfect because it's a good story. It's a great Brian thing. Let me let me write a, a big uh, uh, trailer that'll weave in and out sounds from all the, the the seasons and it'll be like a big awesome thing and everyone will listen to it and they'll say man what a really well edited trailer and uh, i was talking to brian about it and brian's like you know or we could just play the first 12 minutes of the show that's already well edited and would get people really excited and it's already done and i was like well okay and then it, i'm like oh that's right it's actually way better than that well, we're going to put it out as a trailer. And Brian's like, or we could delete it in 48 hours and therefore get everybody more excited to listen to it immediately. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> Turns out you're really good at marketing, Brian. <laughs> well, and, and I, uh, this is the, the first hits free technique. The Yeah, it's crack. It's real. It gets it's real crack. high. It gets really high. It's great. Uh, uh, yeah. No, so, I mean, really, uh, uh, my, I think our, especially now going around this the second time, uh, for Brian and I, our our division of labor on World's Greatest Con is uh, we we sh we come up with the concepts, we shape, we know where the stories are going to go. That's all two key stuff. Uh, I take the lead on the writing and the editing, and Brian uh, uh, fills in as as it is, you know, uh, uh, down down the road a little bit. Uh, and then when it comes to the marketing, Brian. Is this is this is full medicine man rolling into town? I'm not nervous. You're nervous. He's got, You're the one with the weight of the whole enterprise on your shoulder. <laughs> Brian, Brian's Brian's got the <laughs> Brian's got the the the, the uh, suitcase that turns into a stage and like <laughs> he sprouts a cane from his hand and uh, he's like uh, Uncle and, Baby so, Billy. And, and, and by the way, if you no wanna, COVID. If you, <laughs> That was a great moment. Uh, uh, if you want to hear all that in action, listen to the interview of You Are Not So Smart because you'll hear me kind of slip into little bits. And, and when you've said it and them as many times as I've said them in the recordings of everything, all of a sudden, still in a natural cadence, still having a chat, just able to kind of slip into doing a bit of material and then slide right back out from it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the the trailer that you're putting out, or, mm-hmm. or I've got a question because I've noticed something about the trailer that's been. Yes. We've been putting it out on the. This was on this feed. It was on some of the other diamond. Yes, club we are we are here. leveraging all of the uh, diamond club. Uh, you know, it's never really a network, right? Because we don't really sell ads on independent it or whatever. constellation We're, of. Uh, it is our clan. Our clan. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. And um, w- w- where are you directing people? What is the goal? What is the di- the the button click for this marketing campaign? Two goals. Two goals. Okay. Uh, one is you have to make a choice. Do you want to experience this? Because you're only going to experience it for the first time once. You can either choose to experience it. However, it comes in the feed, which will have ads in it. Or you can choose right now, based on the time you spent with season one, whether or not you want to kick us five bucks and and join the Patreon so you can get the ad-free experience. Um, Part of the reason that the call to action is deliberately vague is because it uh, it happens in the app that, uh, like, I don't know what, whoever is hearing this, what your personal favorite podcatching app is yeah but i know mm-hmm. that's where you're hearing this yeah and so you're already congrats you're already there now just a uh, user look up look left look right do you see world's greatest con click go you did it i well, think well, yeah i think i think there is a hard uh, hmm. we're in a fairly sophisticated age of podcast advertising wherein i think the only thing that really matters is that you care about the concept and, and, that, and, and luck, that's ultimately the what is very sticky. Yeah. It's ultimately what I liked about Brian's approach is that instead of doing something that sounds like, you know, as much as it would be good for my own ego to do something that sounds as good as a trailer that Wondery would put out. I've heard a lot of Wondery trailers and I have, sometimes I click on it. Sometimes I don't, it really just matters on whether or not I care about the concept. And when I care about the concept, I would rather just hear as much of it as possible. So uh, to your point, Bryce, there are, there's two things that, that, people need to know a that world's greatest con exists and either you are excited about that because you listened to season one you heard about season one but you didn't give it a shot so now the fact that 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 it is exciting and that it's back should be exciting to you or you have no idea what the hell anybody's talking about and this is going to be a introduction to it it serves all three masters there uh it's a podcast people download and subscribe to podcasts all the time so we don't hold, hold their hands too much in listing every single pl- podcast platform the other thing is the fact that uh this season's gonna have ads and you can get the ad free experience at patreon.com slash greatest con uh and so far that has been a very very good call to action and uh uh we are we are uh, uh, doing we're doing pretty good on that and and that's that's very exciting because this concept of show where you are doing it in seasons and you know most aggressively you would probably see two seasons a year uh so and these are some of my favorite shows that I've based my production style on like um you must remember this and cocaine and rhinestones that is best served by a very asymmetric uh crowdfunding thing where people are the majority of the time paying us money when they are getting literally nothing. Uh, uh, the product is not coming to them in return. We are only giving them updates on vague updates, even then on where we are. So we don't spoil everything. And so there are very few times that we get the opportunity to really ring the bell on getting people in the tent on that. Uh, so far, this is, We'll we'll see where today ends, but we might have had our biggest day on Patreon ever, uh, in you know, uh, in in just getting people excited mm. for this season. So, and and I think also part of the reason that's even happening is because we aren't saying, "Hey, we promise there'll be a thing and it'll be good." We put the thing out. Uh, all of season one was out, and the very last thing we said is, "Hey, by the way, if you want more of this." Patreon, the only thing we promise is the more the Patreon's there, the topper of priority it'll be for us. And um, and then we were just radio silent for five months. And uh, now trust me, behind the scenes, we were hustling and bustling, and we had a very good reason to work very, very hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, you never, nothing ever happens as fast as you'd like, but not for nothing. Five months is a, a pretty good turnaround to, to have all this produced for his big for for doubling the content run over yeah. the last time uh and now we're not even saying 
fund us for even more. We're saying, you now know what this is. You get to choose whether or not you want to buy a, a premium ticket or not. Yeah, and someone, I can't see who it is in the chat, that says, uh, uh, I, I like how open you guys are about uh, the funding. Uh, yes, and, and largely because, you know, A, money rules. Number two, uh, <laughs> this is personal for me with Dog and Pony Show because what I would like to do and what shows like this give me the opportunity to do is to expand and bring on more people, bring on talent that I know is worth that, 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 that I know is really, really good that can kind of come in under the style that I've kind of set up and, and we can do all this stuff way faster. Um, you know, considering we're getting this out in February, starting the, the run in February, I think it's conceivable that we could have season three done the fall by the end of the year. Uh, you know, I, I think it is conceivable because there is money to bring in people to help with stuff, you know. I, and, and, and also, it's like we're, we're now at a point now where um, neither Brian, when we started this, neither Brian knew how the Brian engine worked and neither Justin knew how the Justin engine worked. But now at this point, outside of, outside of the, the only literally irreplaceable part is my voice. Uh, and, uh, outside of that, you know, yeah, we hired staff and we hire writers and mm -hmm. we have a style Bible, a guide, and, and we now see the DNA of it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, uh, that's, I mean, to, to, to get to your point on what, what we want here is hopefully subscriptions on the podcast player of your choice. Yeah. We want to ring the bell on season one. Did you not catch season one? Do you want to be caught up for season two? Go listen to it now. A week is plenty of time. People tend to rip through season one. Uh, and, and with the idea being, hey, look, we're, this is, this is going to be a fun thing that everybody can join in for the next five weeks. So that, that was really the goal. Uh, the, the, the taxonomy of the preview is, you know, uh, a, a little bit of that set up for season one, a reveal of what, the, uh, what season two is going to be about. Brian's personal experience with that to set up the expertise level on it. And then the reveal that, Hey, instead of doing a trailer where we're going to play little out of context clips of all these things, we're literally just going to play you the introduction for the entire season for, for episode one of season two, which is something that we, you know, worked, worked a long time on knowing that, uh, you know, you can't do a show where one of the, the <laughs> repeated axioms over and over and over and over and over again is all the effort into the first impression. Uh, and then not put, and then not put a lot of effort, <laughs> effort into the beginning of the season. So yeah. this was something that we spent a lot of time on and uh, I think is exceptional. Great. Um, it, it, uh, you know, we, we're still in the middle of this, this campaign. So I'm sure we'll talk more about how, how well what what which you know what what avenue people flocked to towards uh the most but um and, th about and that will be one of the agonizing things that i'm already preparing myself for is knowing that you know like they say of ad dollars you're throwing away half of it you just don't know which half you know it's uh, we, we won't know which parts are going to pay off it's a round number it's a round, mysterious number now. Okay, uh, um, but uh, I mean, it, good, bad? Are we? I mean, are no, we, no, are no. We crazy things, as a red alert, green, green so, light. So, what are we? So far, you know, things are are exceptional. I, I don't, I don't think that like uh, uh, for for what we have seen in you know the the uh, fifteen hours since we're, we're we're talking about new new patrons, right? Uh, oh, yeah. the success whatever yeah. kind of version of success i mean you, you, I, like you, I, I mean whatever yeah. you feel about this game i mean how do you feel about you know the results so far 10 out of 10 Perfect. uh uh i i you know obviously you know whenever you have a great success you're like cool but i could double it right uh but like uh, uh for if i were to tell myself before i went to sleep that by three o'clock we would see the patreon uptick that we have i would be very very happy uh i i suspect that that is uh something that will you know continue uh, on with uh, uh listenership and for people spreading the word on it because a lot of these things i mean this is something that we've wanted to do for a very long time is to do an evergreen show because it, a, a, a rollicking story about beating hitler 
doesn't go bad, right? <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of these stories that we're going to tell are, are fairly old. We think we bring a new spin on it. They're not going to go bad. And we don't have a lot of topical shows, right? I mean, even this program is pretty news based. Great Night is very yeah. topical. Court Killers is news. Well, like- we do. I mean, podcasting in general is an aping of radio, and radio has different formats, right? Yeah. And and we tend to do talk radio format for all of the things that we do, and this is more of a narrative format. Uh, and I don't know. I think it's great. Thanks. Yeah, I'm for it. It's for it. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> Everybody check that out. Uh, uh, one more time, patreon.com slash greatest con. Yeah, patreon.com slash greatest con. This is not something that we knew whether or not it would work or not, but uh, I've been making a game of just going into random search engines and just typing the words world's greatest con, and and I'm always happy that we are – at the very top of or whatever there. it is. So wherever it is you want to find it, just type in them them three words. Yeah. yeah. Check in the podcast player that of your choice. It will be in there. Follow, yeah, follow World's Greatest, or subscribe to World's Greatest Con. I don't know what the terminology is now, but like uh, go to World's Greatest Con on the podcast platform of your choice. If you would like the ad-free version, then go to patreon.com slash greatest con. That's where they're going to live. Uh, you will get them uh each and every week as they come out no ads at all and uh understand that you are you're doing you're doing the lord's work in terms of uh helping us helping this stuff come out because now that season two is all but wrapped uh we got some big plans for season mm. three. Oh, so I, so that's a, a a little little question is uh this upcoming season is in the can totally done wrap wrap or ad reads. Yeah. Ad reads. And then also me just driving myself nuts by listening to it and screwing up all the episodes by changing things that don't need to be changed. Mm. Mm. That's pretty much all that needs to be done. Uh, cool. But yeah, mostly, I mean, and there will be, we've been, thankfully, ad sales have gone really well. So uh, this is going to be tatted up like a NASCAR, uh, which is great. But also, look, there's 30 second skip buttons for a reason. Who said that? <laughs> Who Any, said that? Anything else? Who okay. said that? Uh, thank you very much for listening to this episode of After Things. Uh, any other last thoughts? Everybody good? Uh, no. Uh, get well Not soon, good. Andrew Main, wherever yeah. you are. Yeah. That's right. He's suffering from books disease. Booksitis. <laughs> um, so check him out. Thank you, everybody. Bur- Bur- it's bursitis of the books. Bur- yeah. Bur- booksitis. Bur- 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 and Burks. Burks and Burks. Person makes me feel good. <laughs> I hope Rifle that this is not offensive. Thank you, everybody. It's been After Okay. Hey, there we go. Hey. Yo. All right. Well, we are going to go offline. We'll be back in a few hours with Cord Killers. We've got, who do we've got on Cord Killers? Today? Oh, let me check. Um, I, I, we have special guest. It's, is it Meryl? I think it's Meryl. I believe we have Meryl on Cord Killers today. Dang. Quibby hour. <laughs> Quibby. Quibs. Um, yeah, we got Meryl Bar. Yeah, there we go. So tune in for that, everybody. All right. Well, have a good rest of your Monday. Bye. See you.